All right, welcome everybody. Doug here with the LincolnList.com. Just going to do a quick trade recap here of this morning's action. It's a great morning, over 2,700 bucks here in gains. It's just a shade over 9:30 here Pacific time in San Diego, California. So great start. We still have a half a day left, so we're going to see how this plays out. Ironically, these gains have come mainly from shorts in what is one serious bull market. You can see it today, gapping up in the po in the pre-market here, and never really yet today breaking trend we're up like three three points here on the spy so even in a huge market even in a grind up market e even in the most bullish of times that's generally when the greatest short opportunities come open now some people are going to ask why and i tell you this is this is the thought and theories and the fundamentals and everything that goes behind stock market trading on why people lose money or why the majority of people lose money trading if you can remember a warren buffett quote he said when there's blood in the streets you buy. You know, a couple of days ago after this Brexit vote, you've got stocks, you've got a thousand market points drifted here. When it was down a thousand points, nobody was interested in buying. You know, nobody wanted to buy. But today, two days later, after the market has already rallied about half of that back, you're finding people buying stocks at high a day or chasing stocks that are already seven to eight percent. Now, that might work out for you from time to time, but over the course of the long term, that is a horrible way to approach stock trading. It's too late for you to chase stocks. The way that you make money, in, in my opinion, is being ahead of the game. And that's not being ahead of the game. You're too late. If you're waiting that long to make your trading decisions, it's too late. So let's talk about some of these trades. The big winner here, of course, was, I'm going to say, Schlim, Schlim Shady, S-H-L-M. Now, this is a little bit lighter than what I normally like to trade, but you got the good parabolic, and as I've mentioned a lot of times before in these videos, it's not about just because a stock goes up a lot makes it a good short. You know, if we if we come back and we look at the SPY, this would be a great example. You see how vertical this stock gets here in the morning. That's not a trend. This SPY right now, this market overall right here, this is a trend. You can see how it grinds itself out. See, you can see the difference. It's got a nice little gradient to it where this schlim is is not it's straight para now this one was a little different in the in the terms that it wasn't as thick as i like it didn't quite have the volume so when you trade a stock like this that's very light on volume you kind of have to give yourself a little bit of room because a lot of times the bid and the ask price is going to be 20 to 30 cents so in order for you to get into the trade you're going to have to use limit orders and mark your spots like a map and you're also going to have to use limit orders to get out of these trades. So it can take a little bit of time. You have to be more patient. And the reason I say that is because if you watch the video I did a while back about tiers, ranking your trades, you know, not every trade is the same. Even though it may look the same, it's not. You know, you got to take each one of these factors into consideration, like the percentage move, the speed of the move, the volume, the spread, the news. You got to gather all of that stuff as a trader. And then how you manage the risk on that trade, you can do it through position sizing, stops, etc. Also, when you're trading a thin stock like this, it's very difficult to use a tight stop because you'll just get hit on the spread and and, and that's the way it works. So you can't just really use a, a physical hard stop on this. You have to use a mental stop and you have to be flexible. But anyway, I, I got into this trade you know, at a pretty good price, right towards the 2440s, 2450s. It didn't break down the first time, and we got this secondary run-up. And went ahead, and once we got a little bit of red in there, I added to the position. Now, a lot of times when you go into this, if you've seen some of the past videos, you go into these, on, and the key was the RSI here. Two things I was looking at that outweighed the light, light volume was the percentage move. You know, you were up about... 15% from the open. Yes, it's earnings, but that's pretty good. You know, as we've gone through before, you look back here, you don't have too many days of 15% moves. So we get a really nice 15% move. You've got the percentage on it. You, it's all vertical in the morning, all greens, and it was shortable. So it, it made for a nice little play. Got an add in into it. If it would have just fell, fell over to 2352 at the open after I shorted, I would have just taken the money. But the ad actually turned out to be nicer, and we just sort of covered on the way down here. Again, trying to cover all of your position size on these sometimes can be difficult if it's thin. I don't like to park orders on this. I think if a thin stock, when it's thin like this, it's it's tough to just park a big order on there. But it was a nice trade. Turned out for a good 1400 plus. 
and it didn't take too long to do that. Now, a better setup, though, was VAC. Now, this this is close to a, a Tier 1 in, in a trade. It might have lacked a little bit of of the percentage. You know, when you, when you got the move here out of the open, it was about 6 to 7%. I usually like 10, but again, you look down here at the bottom on this 5-minute chart, just like Schlem, where it was 84 RSI, you got a 91 RSI on this. That's a very sweet spot. And as I've talked about before with indicators, there's no, no such thing as a golden indicator where you say, okay, 90 RSI, if, if you're going to ask me, does the 90 RSI going to solve all my problems and let me know when, when there's a top? No, nope, it won't. It's just a really good gauge of how I, how I use it to get into a stock. When I start seeing a high R RSI on a five minute chart of 85, 90, I'm like, okay, now's the time to start going in with a feeler. On this one, the trade worked out a lot better. Un unlike where you had Schlem, even though Schlem turned out to be more in profits, where you had that one, you had to add to it, giving yourself the room. This one was just about spot perfect, just right up here around the 68, 80s, and down it went. Turned out to be an, another $1,000 gainer. This one didn't even last, I think, the whole duration of this trade. I didn't, of course, I didn't bottom ticket down here at 6630s. I covered in here on this second bar. But, you know, you pick up a little bit more than a dollar within a span of maybe three minutes, you know. And this just kind of goes to show you, when you look at both of these, this is what is a Tier 1 top strategy play. And we've gone through this before. But just kind of give you an overview, in the morning, you're going to find a lot of pair boxes, especially in gap up markets and, and, and super bullish markets. People are going to run up prices. And again, to me, it's not about just because it's up a lot. That's not that's one factor. But to me, there are, there are a few elements, and that is the percentage move, which you had on VAC, the speed in which it got there. And again, that's what this RSI, for those that might not understand, the RSI measures that time versus price element. So the RSI is a good gauge to let you know how quickly a stock has made that run. So it's like the faster it goes up, the faster it, it, it comes down. You got a good vertical parabolic coming right out of the gates. Lacked a little bit in the percent department, but I felt, you know, with the RSI and everything else involved, it was pretty good. Plus, it was close to this daily chart resistance here of the 69.20. So I felt somewhere within this double top on the daily chart here, say 69.99s, I felt, well... That's probably going to be your, your cap. Even if it runs up there, I was prepared to add. So really good looking setup here on VAC. Another good one here was this TWLO. Wasn't too bad. Now this is a different kind of trade. You can see that it, it doesn't go vert from the open. This is what we call as a ramp. I missed the first ramp on this. And, and basically what a ramp is. It, it, it's pretty much as like a, a flag setup where you've got a legit breakout on the stock, but then the breakout gets dirty. And I mean, it just goes explosive. And those are, are awesome. I mean, these are really awesome trades to, to short. Here you can see it does the same thing. I'm going to open up this chart just a little bigger so you can see. Here was your first flag. And you get a nice breakout, and it shoots from 33 to just about 35 bucks before it, it pulls back into the moving average. Now, one thing about this trade, and the reason I like it, is this is a, this is like, well, they're all parabolics or euphoria-based trades, but this is a really good one because all of the legit buyers and all the people that, you know, the pros, let's, say, let's just say the pros, had bought here on the flag break. That's where you could control your risk on a trade. When you're doing something like this and explodes, like the, the buying point was 33. I'm not against longing. So if you're longing at 33, you know, you can stop down here at 3270. You can control your risk. And then when it pops, you can trail up and you, you bank. If you're buying up here at 34, and let me show you this, because if you're going to buy up here at 34, after this thing's already stretched, you have to ask yourself, where would my stop be? Your, your stop would be all the way down at 33. And then you have to ask yourself, after you've determined your stop, what would be my profit target? Am I going to get my 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 on this trade? And it's highly unlikely that you will. Now, maybe they do, but this is, a, like as I said before, kind of mentioned, this is a terrible way to approach your business because it's not about one trade in stock market trading. It's, one trade does not define you in this business. It's how you do things over the span of your career. That's what's going to you know, over 10 trades, what's this going to turn out to be? 
So the next one, we do get a nice little run up, you know, almost the same kind of run here. It, it breaks over. This is another legit buying opportunity. When it breaks up out of the flag, you get a nice pull. Got a short in here, and, you know, I didn't ride it down as far as I could have, but nonetheless, it's still a good trade. Now it looks like it's, it's backsiding, which, you know, volume is decreasing, and it, it looks like it might actually test this VWAP down in here and, and a couple other technical levels, but nonetheless a good trade. Now this test row, I had to take a shot of it, and this is what we're talking about. The differences between your levels of trade, and I've done this video before, I say it almost every video. It's called, if you don't rank, you won't bank. Search the website for it. If you can't find it, send me an email, support at LinkedInList.com. I'll send it to you. It talks about ranking your trades. As I said, not all trades are created equal. So I have tier one trades or trades I really like this morning in Schlim and VDC there. But this is different. You know, this is not completely vertical. It's up a lot on good news. But because of the percentage, you know, we're at 111% now, it does garner some interest in being a short. So what I was looking for was any kind of fade or pullback or pivot in this stock to get short. So it kind of runs up. I let it do its thing in the morning. And if you look at this little section right here, I'm going to open it up, you know, let's get it right here. I guess it's kind of clear. Okay, this little section right here, we start getting some really top wicks in, in, in the 7980s. So I'm just kind of looking for some rejection there. So after 15 minutes, these are five minute bars, by the way. So after 15 minutes goes, you know, it's been up all day, you're up 100%. You know, you're, you're close to the 80 whole number, but you can't get it. And you get a little rejection right here. Just a nice little rejection. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot here. I'm going to go short into this using a stop at high a day. Now in a case like this, I don't use a feeler and say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to add to it on the, on the way up. It's not that kind of a trade, if that makes sense. So I have to respect my stop in this case and, and possibly use a hard stop. And because it wasn't a tier one or my favorite kind of trade, you can see that I didn't, well, I only went 150 shares here as opposed to having 4,000 of, of Schlim. You can see the difference. So... One of the things that we need to do as traders is rank our trades because they're not all created equal. And you can't go 100 shares in everything because everything carries a different type of risk and a different kind of target and has different parameters surrounding it. So you have to break those trades down into levels. And because it wasn't a tier one, that doesn't mean I can't trade it. So I just need to be a little bit more conservative. Now, I didn't even let this thing come back up and stop me out. Once we got back through about a half an hour here, I just took the loss, which was about you know, 50, 60 cents or something like that. Not much. Uh, it was worth it, so it's not a big deal. But after it consolidated for a while, that was the choice that I made. And the reason I did that is because we got a few spots here right down in this level, this 77, 87. And I could have took a little bit of profit, but I didn't have a bunch of size. It just refused to get under that. And one beautiful element of stock trading is common sense. When you got a stock that's up 100 plus percent like this, and can't give you one dollar of a fade at any point it's probably not i mean that's a stingy super bullish difficult stock and you can see now it's stuck in that area so there's going to be a lot of people wanting to short this and looking to short this and it's a completely different pattern you certainly have good resistance up here so you either need to be short if that's your your game plan you either need to be short off of 80 or you would need to wait until this thing cleaned out this 7770 in that area before you get a good confirmation of a downtrend. And because it's been like that, I would imagine it will take an hour to two hours to draw your pay out of this thing on a nice fade versus something really quick. So anyway, again, a ni another, another nice morning. And one of the, the points of doing this is because it doesn't matter what the market does. Every trader needs a process to be successful. You have something you excel at. And we've been through this before. If you followed me long enough, you watched some of my videos, but if this is a first time, there are a thousand different ways that you can profit in the stock market. You just need to pick something that you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter what someone else is doing. That doesn't mean it's going to be beneficial to you. It might be something that's difficult for you to do. Maybe you just don't like it. You know, a lot of people are negative about shorting, and we've gone through this as well. 
it doesn't have any reflection on my overall faults and feelings towards the company. It's just a matter of price. They're all just trading vehicles. You know, I look at price and I say this price is not sustainable. Same way with dip buying. There's certain stocks that flush and collapse and that's overdone. And when things get overdone and the setup is right, that's your process. You take the trade and then you manage it from there on out. So at any time you guys feel like you need some help, uh, we're not just a shorting room. We just don't short stocks 100% of the time. We buy a lot. There's other traders in our room that do flag breakouts, breakout patterns. So there's there's a kind of trading for everybody. But I'm sharing some of the insights on how we do it. All the trades made live on screen, as I say all the time. So take a moment. Visit the LinkedInList.com. Take a free trial. Other than that, thanks for listening to me rant and rumble and talk about stocks at any time you need me for anything. You don't have to be a member to ask me a question. My email support at the LinkedInList.com. Take care of yourself and enjoy your day.